Tiffany works with all the pride mapping as a former SLU student. She had the background and she's taking care of all the maps. So what we did here is we made our legend here to show exactly what's going on. As you see, the color codes are the primary areas that the Neighborhood Security Initiative works in. This is our primary areas, this color section. But notice around, because it's all still the Central West End, we still get those statistics. So as people are often asking and saying, well, our crime is really due to us, really this and really that. Well, it's a real fine line of how, and this, these are the types of programs that we can show you how this all works and what it is. Excuse me again, we're going to open this up and get some more chairs. So, uh, this is what we have for February. And as you see, there's a lot. This little guy here, these are our robbers. These little paint, the little guys with the guns, of course. So with that, you get a look and you see where and how they are outside and inside of the boundaries. Auto thefts, which, uh, again, some of those crimes, they pick up at certain times more than they do on a continuous and all the time. <coughs> so we'll move on to the next slide. Cathedral Square. For the month of February, in Cathedral Square, the boundaries, as you can see, of Cathedral. One, two, three larcenies. robbery in those boundaries and one burglary. Uh, that's for the whole month of February. in 
natural boundaries. And then, of course, they connect. Is it actually in the North Jackson District, or is it over in Cathedral Square? So what we're doing is we're getting what that Uniform Crime Report is reporting, and that's the way that we're putting it up on these maps. So let me caution you of another thing. When you get a crime that's reported, by the time the investigation is complete, let's say it takes uh, two months before it's complete, that stat or that status could change. So if it came in as uh, a burglary, someone broke into my house, and it ends up being my nephew, and he broke in and he left, and then later we figure it all out and get it all worked out, and they say if we don't want to press charges, that didn't occur, then that that's notified. So there's a lot of formulas, and this is the whole purpose of what we're trying to do, is to give a little more uh, education, if you will, as to how these things get reported and what's happening. Next, of course, is uh, the North Taxing District. Same thing, there's the larcenies all over again. Lots of larcenies. And again, I'm just going to remind everyone that when we talk about larcenies, it's not just the breaking in your car, it's patio furniture, it's uh, anything that comes up missing or any thefts that are reported. If you're in a business, you come back, your purse is missing, your coat's gone. Those are all classified as larcenies. Okay? Go on to the next one. And this is really just to give you an example uh, of how we now have the access to make these maps. We are going to have them available at the 28th of each month. It'll be for the previous month, obviously. But by the 28th, that's our goal to have all of these done. Uh, so you'll be able to go to the NSI website and be able to access and look and see what crimes occurred uh, in that area, in and around. Because as I stated, we will still put the crimes that are occurring around Twenty years, we've had supplemental uh, security or supplemental patrols in the Central West End. For the first time, you will now be able to see the activity of what our officers that are being paid by the special taxing districts, what they are doing. The field interview reports, that's where they're stopping the folks. Uh, on our way out, I'm trying to get out of the alley, a uh, wonderful young man decided to go to the restroom right there in the alley. So uh, as we made the appropriate phone calls, the officers get there and they start dealing with it. These are, are the field interview reports. So we document, we log this guy, and then as his name comes up more and more and more things, we start keeping track of that to where we can start applying for stay away orders. This has been in place for about five or six years or so, maybe longer. Uh, please help me if anyone that's been here knows that answer. But the stay away orders, this is what it takes. Me as a witness, police officer said, are you willing to be a witness? Absolutely. But you ask someone who's enjoying himself outside who lives in, uh, uh, I don't know, Ontario, Canada, they're probably going to say no. If you don't have the witnesses, you, this is what I mean by the community has to be involved. If we're not going to this, then there's no case. We can't make cases. So that's the importance and the relevance of that. We started escorts, and they're with all of our companies, high-tech security, the city's finest. And when we say escorts and securitas, when we say escorts, as our nightlife gets busy and there's a lot going on, sometimes you may have folks that are walking to their cars at 3 a.m. after they've had a good time. We have now instructed the overnight. Securitas security, they work the hours of 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. They're in golf carts. They are armed security officers. They are riding alongside. We don't put anybody on the bicycles. You can't get on the handlebars, especially after you've been in Bar Louis since 2 p.m. We don't want you getting on the handlebars with the bicycle. 